Let's consider this game. So we have Mac and his daughter Denise. Mac is considering whether or not to take her to Brickland on a weekend. And Denise is going to, for her part, either do her homework or watch TV. We should establish that there's ample time to both do homework and go to Brickland, so there's no time conflict. However, the difficulty here is that Mac would like Denise to do her homework, but Denise would not like to do the homework. So the payoffs are as follows. If Mac takes Den Denise to the amusement park, but instead of doing her homework, she watches TV, his payoff is lowest. If she keeps her at home and she watches TV, it's slightly higher payoff. His highest payoff is if he takes her to Brickland and she does her homework. Her next, his next highest one is if they stay home and she does her homework. So he does enjoy going with her to Brickland, but only if she does her homework. Denise, on the other hand, is happiest when she gets to go to Brickland and watches TV instead of doing her homework, and least happy when she has to stay home and has to do her homework. So let's analyze first the best responses in this game. First, Mac. If Denise were to watch TV, Mac would prefer to keep her at home. If Denise were to do her homework, he would prefer to reward her. Denise, if her dad takes her to Brickland, she would prefer to watch TV the rest of the weekend rather than do her homework. If he does not, if he keeps her at home, she would still prefer to watch TV rather than do her homework. So you could see that Mac does not have a dominant strategy. However, Denise does. Her dominant strategy is to watch TV and her dominated strategy is to do homework. So there's only one Nash equilibrium in the game. There's only one combination of strategies where both Mac and Denise are best responding, and that's when he keeps her at home and she watches TV. So in a situation like this, it matters whether there can be an order imposed in those decisions. For example, suppose that Tickets to Brickland are only available for Saturday, and for whatever reason, the homework can only be done on Sunday. In that case, Mac has to decide first whether or not to take her to Brickland, and the next day, Denise has to decide whether or not to do her homework. So we'll look at that situation first, and then we'll consider the flip situation where it turns out that Denise can only do her homework on Saturday, and the tickets are only available for Sunday. Suppose the game was structured so that Mac had to decide first and then Denise would the next day. So his choice is whether or not to take her to Brickland. The way he'll make his decision is he'll be able to look forward and anticipate what Denise's choice will be. So we'll work backwards from the last mover, in this case Denise, if Mac takes her to Brickland on Saturday, then on Sunday, her options will be to watch TV or do her homework, and the payoffs that come with that are 300 and 200, so she will choose to watch TV. If he doesn't take her to Brickland, then she has the same two options and the same best response. So now, as Mac, knowing Denise's payoffs in each case, he can anticipate what will happen. And so his actual choice then is between this outcome and this. He knows that whatever he chooses to do, Denise's incentives will be to watch TV rather than do her homework. And so his preference then will be to keep her at home rather than take her to Brickland. And so by comparing these two payoffs, Mac picks this. 
so that he will choose to keep the niece at home and she will choose to watch TV. This is not ideal for her, right? She would prefer to go to Brickland and do her homework than to stay home and not do her homework. The problem here is that if she tries to tell Mac this, he knows that her incentive on Sunday will be different. How can we resolve a situation like this? Well, fundamentally, the problem is that the promise Denise is making is not credible because her incentives will be to break the promise. So if we could alter those incentives somehow, that would solve this commitment problem. One way we could think of doing that is by using that promise itself. So if Mac and Denise expect to interact again in similar circumstances, then having a promise associated with her commitment to do a certain thing will change these payoffs in the following way. If Denise keeps her word now, then she can expect Mac to trust her in the future. Every time in the future that he trusts her and she keeps her word, she can expect to have a surplus higher by 100. So every future time this situation comes up, she will get the benefit of being in this outcome rather than this. So the value of that promise is her future expected surplus from having her dad trust her. Then when she's deciding whether or not to do her homework, what's in the balance isn't just this immediate surplus from watching TV, but also the potential loss of the trust. So this would now be minus the broken promise, right? That could then potentially solve this dilemma. The other way we could solve this particular problem is by switching the order. Suppose that Denise could do her homework on Saturday and they could go to Brickland on Sunday. The order of movement would be reversed and let's see what would happen then. I've now reversed the order so that Denise decides first what to do and then Mac will decide whether or not to take her to Brickland. Now, Denise can anticipate that if she watches TV, then Mac will choose to keep her at home because that is his higher payoff. Whereas if she does her homework, Mac will choose to take her to Brickland then Denise is actually choosing between these two outcomes. So she's comparing these two payoffs. This is the higher one. So she will choose to do her homework and he will choose to take her to Brickland. So now they're both doing better than in the alternative case. There's no commitment problem now because what Mac promises to do I'll take you to Brickland if you do your homework, is also what his incentive will be. If, on the other hand, he would like to go to Brickland whether or not she does her homework, or he would like to not go to Brickland in both cases, the promise would again not be credible and would not help them reach this better outcome. So right now, it looks like as long as she can do the homework before he has to decide whether or not to get tickets, that's the preferred um, outcome for them both.